Hi folks, communicating with Infusion 360. This is the way I remind myself, or more importantly, as we work within a team, the intent or the reason why stuff is where it is in Fusion. I wanted to walk through some of the tips and tricks. Nothing is revolutionary here, but we have found some stuff that works well and some stuff that doesn't. So first off, in the design space, you don't have to leave Sketch as the default name. We've got some rename, renamed here. One is the approximate travel of our horizontal, um, but the most important one here is master pattern op two for fixture location. Well, I'll show more detail behind what this sketch does in a second when we hop over into the cam workspace. But if I turn the sketch visibility on and I'll go ahead and edit it and I can look straight on at it, you'll see I not only have the sketch labeled, so I know that this is a master pattern, tells me or anybody else, uh, especially me six months down the road when I forget how I did this, that this is an important sketch. This drives the op two fixture location. And I've tried to take my time on this one to create uh, decently aligned dimensions. So you try to have them uh, move inward to outward and be all legible and visible. And then the other obvious thing you can do is you can just add a CAD sketch on the sketch here where I'm actually reminding myself bottom left point is the anchored. That's this point right here. I literally just anchored it green. And then the other five points, again, we'll show this in the CAD, uh, camp space, are all dimensioned off of that. The other initial we use a lot in Fusion is DNU. That stands for do not use. Um, sometimes if you've used Fusion for any amount of time, you know that it can be difficult or annoying to try to delete old stuff and you're better off um, just reminding yourself, I don't use this one anymore. So DNU is how we do that both within sketches and uh, within old file names. So if we want to leave the file, but remind ourselves, don't use this one. Hopping over into the manufacturer workspace, I've got three setups going on right now. The first one is a dummy setup. This is my favorite way of leaving a note for myself or the team about what's going on with this file, especially when we're working up a new fixture or new process. Somewhat ironic because there is the comments section within Fusion. And I don't have anything against it, we just don't use it. And because we don't use it, nobody knows to look there and it's just not part of our workflow. And I find I'm always looking at setups and so adding a dummy setup right here that I can label uh, dummy setup with notes is quite helpful. And if I expand it, usually what we'll do is add an NC pass through, or excuse me, a manual NC. And you can do that by going to setup, manual NC, um, and ironically, the comment is not my favorite one because the comment gives you a small window, but if you switch it to pass through, you get a much bigger text box window that will also scale as you open this up a little bit. So it makes it much easier to remind myself, okay, right now, here's, what we're, here's what's going on with this file. The next setup is WIP, so work in progress. H183, uh, our Akuma uses H just for offsets. So think of this like G54, G55, and um, what I'm doing now is correcting something that is frankly uh, a good example of a flaw in this system, which is that labeling the offset in the name, we like to do it, but there's no parity check or continuity check between what you actually have programmed as the offset. So you gotta be careful uh, with that here. But that tells me that this is using offset 183 and then it's op two. And then X for us means it's patterned in some way. It's either patterned via post-processor multiple offsets or in this case, it's patterned via patterns within the cam uh, patterns themselves. But the X tells us it's not making just one part. And again, I think I mentioned this, but WIP, work in progress. One of the critical operations here is facing. So we call that critical, and by that I mean there's a critical dimension that will tie directly into either a process sheet or even one of our yellow pieces of paper that talks about how we maintain a specific feature on a part. And all of those papers live in process bins for the parts. But most importantly, I say critical via ASTL. For us, that means axial stock to leave. So under passes, I can see axial stock to leave. On this particular tombstone, the tool holder gets relatively close to the bottom uh, flange or base of this tombstone. So I've added two stops and in between those two stops are a comment that says check tool holder clearance. This makes sure it will post M zeros. So whether the machine is on option stop or not, when we first post this program through, it's going to stop here. I'm gonna see this comment at the control and I have to hit cycle start twice 
uh, to get through that, which is an extra redundant feature. And I'll admit sometimes if I'm super paranoid and I almost wanna remind myself to revisit this either in cam or when I've posted the code of the machine, I'll hit Control D and I'll duplicate that three or four times and then I'll even copy, paste, a whole bunch of them. This is probably borderline sloppy, but it also just tells me sometimes if I'm programming late at night and I want to remind myself, hey, I really need to work on this, I'll throw a bunch of those in there. The third setup is testing only. Sometimes we'll use this if we're just trying to figure out what's going on with the toolpath. Uh, we want to debug, test something. It has DNU, so it stands for do not use, and then I'll actually program it outside of the offset range of the machine. So Arakuma has 200 offsets, H201, as you can see right here, work offset 201 means if I were to try to accidentally post this code or somebody accidentally picked all the operations, it's going to error out saying the work offset is out of range. Coming back to the CAD sketch that was that master pattern, we've really become big fans of using the fusion duplication pattern. What that allows you to do is pick specific sketch points uh, and not rely on the solid models and I just find it has an, it's an essence of simplicity because in this case, I have one point that's serving as my source point and I have the five targets. Those points are only, only exist in a single sketch and that was this master and pattern sketch right here. And what I like about that is it avoids some of the complication that happens with joints and locating solid objects. Uh, and it means I can update every single location with Again, one sketch, and for the sake of an extreme difference here, if we say change this from 1.635 to 0.1 inches, you'll notice that point gets pushed really far to the right. Finish sketch, hop back into the manufacturer workspace, and if I look at this way this pattern runs right here, and I regenerate you can see it's now pushed that far to the right. I think this works really well for, again, the simplicity of it. And it even gives you the ability to add specific commentary. Let's say you wanted to adjust this only two thou. You could go back to the dimension we had at 1.635 and then say, let's say with 1.633 and you could add, create a text and say fixture is slightly to the right, adjusted by two thou on March 10th, 2025. Or whatever floats your boat in terms of having that level of commentary or design intent. Under the NC programs section, we're big fans of descriptive names there as well. Here, going from bottom to top, op to production, this would be our normal production file that would run the normal day-to-day -day of that part. Here, I may have a rework chamfer operation. I've named not only the NC program here, but I'll rename the file name itself. In this case, starting it with an A temp. The, the leading A just puts it at the top of the list of programs on the control itself. And obviously, we'd want to limit to just saying only doing the finished chamfer right here. And then a temp is something when we're just doing something super temporary. Uh, usually anybody can delete any a temp at any point in time. We've also spent a lot of time cleaning up a lot of our data structure itself. So within Saunders Machine Works for our fixture plates and Modvice, we have under Modvice, we have say Gen 3. And then for all of the main folders, this same structure exists across all of our product line where we have a drawings folder, a CAM folder, and a CAD master. And in the CAM, uh, it's usually up to the operators or programmers how they want to structure this, except we will put CAM for fixtures in a separate folder to try to avoid the confusion of, am I looking at a part CAM or am I looking at a fixture CAM? And under CAD Master, we will always also include the Lex ID. For us, that's an, usually an A or B or an S number that lets us try to better search for the CAD Master when needed, although I would say search is not one of Fusion strong suits by any means. Uh, one tip is if you click the little globe icon here, it will open you in the web. And this is, it, this is not great, but it's mildly better and certainly faster to use the search in this uh, web browser part of Fusion. I think they call it uh, 
Fusion Hub or Fusion 360 or something uh, online versus using the native Fusion search. Oh, John from the editing desk here. I forgot one of the most important things I find on a day-to-day -day basis is we have edited our post processor so that every time we send G code to the machine, the top of the G code file shows the time uh, timestamp and, and date stamp. That way we know when that code was posted. And card here to a video walking through how you can add that to your post for your machine. As always folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.